Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. Today I'm going to talk you through a tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use wax seals over ribbon. This is really popular in the wedding industry. You see it a lot with wedding invitations, especially higher end, whether it's with string or with ribbon. And so I wanted to show you how to do that. I'm going to be using my Idlewild Suite, which is part of my editorial collection on my website. You can find it linked down below. Um, you'll only need the invitation, but you'll want to keep the other cards nearby because I'll be showing you how to insert them later. Of course, you'll need some ribbon, and I recommend having this measured and cut out beforehand. You'll only need one piece at a time, obviously, but it really helps things to move along seamlessly if you have them cut up already. And of course, along with this, you'll need some wax. So this wax is specifically designed to go inside of a glue gun. It is the color Vintage Rose by Artisire. And here is my glue gun. You want to make sure, if you have the option, that it is set too low. If it's too hot, your wax will bubble and it just creates a really yucky texture and causes other problems. So make sure that that is on low and that you have enough sticks to push all of the wax through. And then I'll be using a one inch sealing stamp. This is my blush bride design that I've used before on here um, and I will be using again in the future. And then if you've done a wax seal video with me before, you know that I recommend chilling your seal on a bag of ice and having a clean cloth to dab it off on after or before you seal it. So I'm just going to set those off to the side and put my seal onto the ice to start cooling it. Now the secret to creating a wax seal over a ribbon belly band is actually parchment paper. You can also use baking paper. Really what you need is kind of that anti-stick quality. Have those pre-cut just like the ribbon and I'm going to set some of these to the side. I do have another trick to show you with that. Now as you're preparing to wrap your ribbon around, most ribbons have a wrong side and a right side. So make sure you decide which side of the ribbon you want to use before you get started so that all of your invitations are consistent. It's the seal in the center with the tails going up or down. Now if I place the wax seal there, it will definitely go on my invitation, but that's where our parchment paper comes in. I actually like to crush the parchment paper. This isn't something I've seen anybody else do, but I find that the natural curve of the parchment paper from being in the roll is very difficult and frustrating to have to fight. So if I just kind of crush it and wrinkle it a little bit, it lays so much flatter and it's so much easier to work with. So I've got my parchment paper between my ribbon and my invitation and I've twisted it again and it's ready for the seal. Now the reason that I twist the ribbon instead of tying a knot is because especially with thicker ribbon like this, a knot would be way too thick. Adding the wax seal on it, the wax is just going to drip off. It'll be really hard to get a good impression with your stamp. So that's why we twist it and really try and make that ribbon as flat as possible. If you're using something like twine, a knot would be fine. I'll have an example of that later. Um, but when you're using ribbon, especially if it's a thicker piece like this, um, then I recommend doing the twist method instead. Dab and place your stamp while the wax is still hot. And when it's cool, you'll be able to take it off. So you'll, you'll know if it's cool if it kind of has a little bit of a give like that. And you have your beautiful wax seal. Now that the wax is cooled, you'll actually be able to remove the parchment paper from behind the ribbon. And you can see that it didn't leave any marks and you can use this again for your other invitations. Next, you'll just stuff the inserts right in between the ribbon and the invitation. You can do this in the front or the back depending on you know, the style that you're going for and um, the final look that you want your guests to receive when they're opening up your invitations. Um, but there it is. I think that this is beautiful. I love, personally, that really organic raw edge. I feel like it's so historic and tells such a beautiful story. But if you want something that's a little more perfected like that stamp, I actually have a method for you as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. For this technique, you're not going to need to use a traditional stamp. So I'm going to put that away. No stamp means no ice to chill it and no towels to clean it off with. And even though you could use a glue gun, I'm actually going to use my candle for this technique and my sealing spoon. Um, this is just, you can use your glue gun, but I just thought I'd switch it up a little bit since we're doing a different tutorial. Now the trick for this one is getting the pre-made wax seals. I got these from Artisire. Thank you so much Artisire for sponsoring this video and for providing these seals as well as the ribbon that we're going to use for this quick tutorial. Now the great thing about the pre-made seals is that you can get different edges. So I was just holding up one that's a little more perfect and this one's a little more organic. But the trick with these seals is you want them to have no adhesive on the back. So if you order them from Artisire, make sure that you mention that. 
Next you're going to need some sealing wax and you want it to be the same color as the stamp. But because I'm using my melting spoon instead of the glue gun, I needed to cut these up just with my embroidery scissors um, in order to get the smaller pieces that I could fit into my melting spoon. So I'm going to set those aside to start melting and we'll get started. This is my Pemberley Sweet Invitation, um, also available on my website. I'll have that link down below. And the Tono & Co. Ribbon in Peach. It is beautiful. Again, we're going to have these pre-cut so that they perfectly fit your invitation already, which will allow us to move through this process really quickly. So I have my wax melting. I have my ribbon that I'm going to wrap around the invitation. And again, we're going to twist this. So even though this ribbon is thinner, um, tying a knot with it would make it very thick crushing that parchment paper, adding it between our invitation and our ribbon to protect the invitation. And I'm going to twist the ribbon so that it is ready for the wax to go down. So just fussing with that until I have it exactly how I want it to be. And my wax is nice and runny and it's ready to go. So just like the other um, style that we did, I'm just going to place this wax right in the center, making sure to get both sides of the ribbon and allowing it to fall off a little bit. Now I just need to have enough to hold the ribbon together and to stick our, my pre-made wax stamps to the um, wax seal that I'm putting down. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to line it up and you'll see I'm pausing here a little bit. I want to make sure that that wax is not too hot before I place it down or else it could mess up the impression that I have on my seal. I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. So push down after it's cooled off a little bit. And once it's cool, I can take my hand off and it is going to be stuck there. So see how it's sticking to the ribbon now? That's exactly what we're going for. Now there is a little bit of a raised indent you can see on my seal. That's normal, it's just because it was warmed up by the wax that we poured initially. However, if you experience something like this, that means that your wax was way too hot when you placed it down. So try cooling it a little bit or just allowing it to have some breathing room to cool before you place down that sticker stamp, if you will. And you can see how the wax goes over the ribbon and it kind of holds everything in place. Um, it's holding the ribbon together as well and you're able to stuff some paper inside of it. Let's say the worst case scenario happened. You get your stamps and there is adhesive on the back, even though you had requested no adhesive. What are you gonna do? So adhesive, um, you can tell if there's adhesive on the back if there's like this little sticker part and you can see the adhesive on the back of that stamp. There is actually a way to work around this and I'm gonna show you. It's not quite as foolproof if you're working with a thicker ribbon like I have been showing you, um, but you can use this method to still get the look that you're going for um, without destroying your invitations. So we're gonna take our pre-cut ribbon, wrap it around real quick. You actually don't need the parchment paper or the candle for this step, so we're gonna just kind of remove those from our workspace just because um, we don't need the extra distractions. So I have my ribbon, I'm going to twist it as always, and this time my main goal is to get this as small as possible. Yes, I still want it to be thin, but I want that centerpiece to be as small as possible. I've got it kind of bust around. I'm going to take the adhesive off of the back of this stamp. Should have had done this before. <laughs> Set that off to the side. Now I'm going to keep this little sticker and I'm going to place that underneath the seal, the ribbon right where I want to place the seal. Now I'm going to take my seal, line it up, making sure my ribbon isn't doing anything weird, and I'm going to carefully place it on. Make sure that you're really pushing it back into that sticker that it came off of so that it doesn't go on your invitation. And while this technique works, it's not foolproof. You can see it's not quite sticking on the back there. Um, it actually works better with string. Um, but it is an awesome alternative if you want to get the look of wax seals but you're afraid to deal with hot wax, then this can be an awesome alternative for you. So that is my three favorite ways to use wax seals over ribbon, just the different techniques that I've used in the past, whether you're going for a more perfected edge or something a little bit more organic like this. 
If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would love it if you would give it a like or leave a comment down below. And until next time, happy stamping!